Dundalk TV is with Mark Baskerville with Baltimore County Campaign for Liberty. Now, uh, Mark, uh, you um, are at the um, District 7 um, Town Hall meeting. Um, so what brought you here and how many of the Town Hall meetings have you been to so far? Uh, I've been to all the meetings so far. Um, I'm mainly interested in coming out here to be a voice against uh, tax increases. Uh, these meetings are, the front end of the meeting is basically a presentation about the county's fiscal problems. And uh, you know, our group, Campaign for Liberty, uh, we are all for um, spending cuts only, no tax increases and you know no exceptions on that because you know when you take money from the people and you continually increase tax burdens that actually is what leads to a lot of uh, division in our communities because we have our money taken away from us and then we're forced to fight each other over how the politicians spend it and when we should really be looking at it's really us together versus the political class. You know, do we want to have control over how money gets spended, spent because we have the money in our pockets, or do we want to have to fight and pressure the political class all the time over how they're going to spend our money? So, uh, stop me if I'm running on too long here. If you have no, not at all. But, but I thought that you made a really good point. You said that the population has uh, grown. Um, uh, yeah, sm I can by a little bit, but but the taxes have increased uh, exponentially. Yeah, uh, let me. Uh, I have a more specific stat right here. Um, so, yeah, I was asking. I wasn't sure the exact population right now, so I had that question. Uh, I've been. I've heard it's around eight thirty, eight thirty five thousand people in Baltimore County. So in 2010, less than a decade ago, our population was right around 800,000. So going from around 800,000 up to around 830, 835,000, that's a little under a 5% increase in population. Whereas in that same period, total tax revenues collected by the county have gone up over 25%. In 20 Fiscal year 2010, it was 1.414 billion in total taxes collected, and the most recent data I've seen from fiscal year 2017, it's up to 1.776 billion dollars. So that's over a 25% increase in taxes collected relative to just a 5% population increase, meaning that your average tax burden per resident is going up, even though the tax rates stay the same. So, and, you, and you mentioned something about cutting the um, cutting the tax, not 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 raising it all. So so you know just to stabilize it where it's at. Um, so and do you feel that that is going to fix the progress? And one other question I have is, um, I was told uh, by one of our Dundalk TV viewers that um, they uh, the number that um, the county executive had brought up eighty one million dollars that um, that that is pretty much a manufactured number to. Uh, raise the taxes of so um, would you agree with that well you know we've yet to see really what the details are uh, that breaks down these numbers that we're being given I think that's another issue I mean does anybody in the county any resident you know really know where to go to go find and easily access all the details on how their tax dollars are being spent um, you know, I've looked into the numbers a little bit. I've seen, you can see what's appropriated for certain uh, overall line items, overall departments and things like that. And then, you know, subsections within those departments. But it's, that doesn't really break it's just down so big specifically and so complicated. what is being spent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't break down, you know, what contractors are being paid for these services. You know, if there's government contractors involved. And so, you know, it's really hard for anybody to answer exactly where there might be waste. Um, I think there are some pretty easy examples to point out of what is an obvious waste of taxpayer money. For example, any uh, taxpayer-backed uh, pensions for politicians. Uh, you know, if, if there's a shortfall in their pension and the taxpayers have to shore it up later, clearly that's not serving any public benefit. There's no service that anybody is receiving in exchange for that. So I would, you know, I think it's not a huge chunk of the budget, but I think it would be a good sign of good faith of our political class just to abolish 
creating pensions for themselves going forward, especially since they're not, they're not really, I mean, some of them are career politicians, but generally aren't staying in office for, you know, decades and decades. Well, I'd like to thank you for everything that you're doing. I know you're out there working very hard. I've seen you for years uh, uh, all around town. Here's so uh, so uh, would uh, like for you to give your contact information so people can follow you. Yeah, again, it's Baltimore County Campaign for Liberty. Just type all that out. We're on Facebook. Uh, a more direct way to find that is just facebook.com slash Baltimore Liberty. And that's basically the easiest way to follow us online. Uh, our statewide website for Maryland Campaign for Liberty is just mdc4l.com. That's the number four, mdc4l.com. And you know, there you can find a handful of different uh, sign-up forms, petition forms on different issues we're working on a lot on right now, including just resisting tax increases here in Baltimore County and across the state as well as several other issues. And you know, the good thing about our organization, we're all about the issues, all right? You don't have to agree with us on every single issue, but if you find an issue, Democrat, Republican, Independent, wherever you come from ideologically, we want to team up with you on the issues where we agree on rather than be divided in these sort of partisan ways. We're a totally nonpartisan organization.